first of all i'm so thankful at least to give me this opportunity to meet the lawyers here i was very keen to meet and thanks to your officers uh, bearers that they came to me and asked me sir please come and join us so i thought uh, i can't get a better opportunity in meeting the majority of lawyers who are the backbone of the whole institution so i'm very thankful to all of you and uh, particularly to your executive who come forward to thanks me i'm so much eager to meet all of you together this supreme court advocate on record association i think was created long back uh, to my memories go back and when i was coming to this court now i coming from my own state but i was calling the lawyer from my own state please file the papers and get it ready well the day i come so i visualized that time that what is the effective role of the advocate on record and when i personally look into it the kind of a responsibility is there on the advocate on records then only i felt that minus advocate on record this institution cannot function they are the spine they are the backbone of the whole institution and when we talk about uh, dispensation of justice liberty freedom whatever you say about article 21 i think if this institution is not strengthened this institution is not properly monitored <coughs> this institution is not giving what is due i think including me we are failing in our duty so first and foremost my request to all the members of the executive who get the opportunity to serve who know the powers of the whole institution who are on the forefront who always know what is the pulse of the whole institution my request to them is please put forward the difficulties with the members of this association feel not only in the functioning but also in discharge of their duties which under the forum assigned to them what i come across is up to the date to contest elections and to become a member of the executive either president or secretary in whatever capacity you are we never look behind i'm not uh, telling for anybody individual i am in general so my request is whosoever today get an opportunity who becomes tomorrow the executive chairman or the president what you call them please keep all time times in mind that the grievance of a common member of this association which he always feel and uh, the rough weather from which he come across that must be projected and after coming to this solution i find that we have never come across the ground reality which a advocate on record faces so whosoever will now take a button i don't know we have not seen you are the president oh, sir, come here sir, sir. Uh, you are not there uh, my request to the president of the bar is that it is your bound and duty to see that each and every member of this uh, advocate on record association must give something in writing to him as to what they need an amendment in the institution what they need amendment in the functioning of this uh, association to make the thing more workable more congenial and more acceptable to the members of the association at large i can share one of my own instance i became the president of my institution in rajasthan 99 i was the youngest of my time the day i took my charge as a president the next day i was just going inside the corridor 
completely unknown of that what is my duty assigned to me as a president of the association one lawyer was rushing behind me i said young man what happened to you okay sir sir i have a work some work from you i said what happened he said sir there is some difficulty with me and uh, i said you go to the police station you have difficulty then my assistant told me sir you can't say now you are a president of the association so it is your job to take care of him so what i want to say is whatever the problem with the individual faces it is the president of the association has to take care of it if he come to i have seen your syllabus also yesterday and when he come across this about advocacy and professional ethics i don't think this topic is immune from us day in and day out we talk about the ethics when you call about advocacy advocacy to our understanding is statute really covered to my understanding professional ethics is more important than the advocacy ethics because advocacy is regulated by statute you are being provided as to how you have to regulate yourself as an advocate after being registered all actions are being taken under the statute regulated by statute the committees of the bar council and all so everything is being institutionalized everything is being known to us it is being guarded within the four corners of the statute so we are bound by it and we have no escape i only advise you for the advocacy ethics are concerned if you see the act there are so many provisions provided for misconduct there are so many provisions under the act itself as to what the manner in which the advocate registered with the bar council of the respective state or the india has to regulate himself it only gives you a insight as to i i have to keep myself in order and i should not breach or violate the provisions of the act which governs me so and after you being into profession here for a long time you all understand by experience what are my guiding <coughs> principles with the statute has given to me but we'll tell you one thing here in this court we are coming across the kind of a litigation coming forward from bar council of india to this sometime it disturbs my peace the lawyers within the class fighting sometime because of profession sometime because of their personal interest in the properties sometime their interest with the uh, counterpart who is uh, some in the business and their matters through misconduct coming to this court my request is we must keep one thing in mind that we should never be participating as a litigant and i'll tell you one thing when you see your cause list and you find there are three matters or five matters are listed where your name is shown Ramesh Kumar, very happy. But you are happy when your name is shown in the category of a lawyers representing some litigant. Think if you are substituting yourself as a litigant, and Ram Kumar name shifts from the this fees of lawyers to a litigant category, very disturbing. Very disturbing. So my request is, please keep it in mind that what may happen, you have to sacrifice. please sacrifice you have to lose please lose you have to share please share but keep it in mind that your name name should never be shown in the category of litigants before the court that is one thing which i never and never accept this category is by passage of time is being developed 
may not be in this court. You go to the trial court, sometime in high court, people are start doing. They become advocate, got themselves registered with the bar council, but they do real estate business. And day in and day out, FIRs being filed as a real estate business is a part of job. And they are before the court with a band tied there and I think I'm an advocate, sir, grant me a bail. Some matters travel to this court also. Yes, today also there was a matter. In my court itself. <coughs> when the lawyer was asking me, some lawyer in his dress, he was pulling him. I said, who are you? Because I'm a litigant. Ashamed of this institution. I feel myself ashamed. So what my request to this members of the bar is, please keep one thing in mind, never be standing somewhere in the category of a litigant before the court. Something comes on your head under compulsion, per force, find out the solution. But don't initiate. <coughs> Rest the act will take care of. My worry is in reference to a professional events. Professional ethics, to my understanding, <coughs> has no ends. We know everything that we should not deceive our client. We should be cordial to my counterparts. We should be thorough on the subject. We should not mislead the court. We should be respectful to the court, to the brother colleagues. These are the general ethics which, in profession, we expect from each other. And if we look into the confined to this court, if I go back to my days when I was coming here, going back to 2001, 2002, up to, I never find any lawyer ever raise voice. Never. Never. And the humbleness to the court Uh, I can't even explain the way the lawyers were. And the stalwarts of this institution, stalwarts. I think, and I can include myself also, the judges sitting there, they can also never expect that the, those lawyers who are standing in front of me is much, much better than me on the subject. I'll tell you my days when Falina Ariyaman appeared in one matter in Rajasthan. And I was a young lawyer. He was, he was very soft. And he was trying his best to clear to the judge. But something was missing somewhere. There was some communication gap going on. I'm talking about the senior uh, Falina Rimani. His statement was, sir, sir, I'm failing somewhere that I've not been able to make myself clear. I don't find today the lawyer say so. Now I say, you are the person, you are not understanding, what can I do? That was the humbleness. They are the learned people. See, Surabhji, I can tell you, Mistress, I briefed him in my younger time. He appeared before me in Rajasthan. He appeared before me in the Supreme Court. But I find his humbleness was much, much more in degree in what he was earlier. And see the rise of the... But that has gone. I can't say completely vanished, but gone somewhere. So my request is, your humbleness always pay in profession. Your politeness always be considered. Your straightforwardness, you must be straightforward to the court. I am being accused sometimes, this judge is always putting directly, hitting a question and asking an answer which is not comfortable. But as a lawyer also, I was in the same trend. 
If the judge is also going right left, I said, come there, this is my question. <coughs> so after coming from that side to this side, I think I'm wrong, maybe wrong, but I follow the same mechanism here also. <coughs> Sometime uh, I become slightly um, harsh also, but I apologize for it. So what my request is, you being all young members, you have to go a very long way. <coughs> Keep your politeness throughout, even whether you lose or you win. Because what happened, I'll tell you, judges are not God. They're all human beings. And we have our own perceptions. We have been brought up in a different, in some atmosphere. <coughs> we have some ground realities which we have realized by passage of time. We have developed our own perception. <coughs> That's why people say, you take one SLP and place it before the five judges, different benches covered by one Supreme Court judgment reported in 83, one SCC, page 32, God knows. But you will find different orders of three benches. It's not that there's a lack of understanding. No. There's no lack of understanding, no lack of approach. But the perception is different. So what I want to say is, as a professional, one should not be relief-oriented. What I expect from you is, as a professional, you must discharge your duties as a lawyer to the best of your ability and see that what you want to convey to the court has been conveyed properly from you. And then leave it for the court. If you understand that a judge has understood me properly, I leave it. Don't go on hammer all the time. You will do it. You lose the discretion. And I'll tell you, now my experience goes from both sides. If you find that this, this lawyer is very fair, and we never find this lawyer, never ever is any concealment, now the matter comes. That very matter, if argued by that lawyer, my discretion will always go to him because of his fairness. The very matter is being put by the same lawyer, by the other lawyer before me. If I am bound by law on the subject, I have no discretion to lift. I will do it. But he will call upon me to have exercise my discretion. My discretion will never be with him. One can say why. This is my own view. I am a human being. I can exercise my discretion because I know this law is well read, well prepared, very humble to the court, fair is. So these are the professional ethics which are expected. My second request is, must be very cordial to your counterparts who are appearing on and have a very collectiveness approach. What we find today is that immediately when the other lawyer starts saying something, the lawyer on the other side starts hammering him and sometimes accusing him. Not required. This is the way by which we have a patience. The lawyer is supposed to be very, very patient. Listen. And then respond. This is one professional ethics which is expected. There are so many facets which we come across. And one is experience. One can say that I am a student from a national law Bangalore with five years of my standing in the bar and this fellow who has come might be three, six years, but my vocabulary is good, my understanding is good, my feeding channel is good, but still I have not been able to succeed. So despite all better prospects, still he is not succeeding. He is not, not succeeding for different reasons. Because these are all tools which you get the best. 
success is something quite different and i'll tell you and frankly hard labor and your destiny is something different than the success and with my 41 years of in this institution i still not been able to know where the success lies in the system and why one is succeeded and one loses there are so many facets so many things goes on ultimately the collectiveness but one thing is clear there is no substitute to a hard labor no substitute and never adopt this short livings we sometimes do it to earn money slightly early than expected don't have that these things are very short lived but that spoil your career that spoil your professional <coughs> that always haunt you if i do something wrong today i can say something before the public that nothing wrong with me but that will haunt you throughout and you will not be able to get an answer <coughs> and profession be humble to your colleagues one day i was telling someone they say all the junior my junior my junior i said don't say junior in one office all colleagues work together and they work as a team what is junior senior because if five year standing lawyer can bypass 15 years standing lawyer what junior and senior nothing so we work as a team these are something which i feel that time tested solutions with my experience are there <coughs> as looking to your papers also there's so many multiple choice questions are there but i find all those questions mostly are those which you are coming practically every day in the court premises i don't know what the paper given to me yesterday yeah yeah this is a paper i was just looking forward to the multiple choice last year last year almost questions are those which are you are coming across every day practically but still we lose the question put to us is why to my understanding is when we ask to put yes or no whatever the way they ask for sometime my understanding doesn't meet with the requirement i am miss that so what my request is those who are appearing in this examination now never put what you are expecting from yourself put what the litigant is expecting from you what we are doing is we are taking ourselves in front and then try to find out the answer no put the litigant in front and then ask the answer because we are all working for the benefit of the litigant we all are meant to see that the litigant gets the best advice what is possible within the parameters of law can be taken care of by the lawyers and by the judges also so as long as we are taking care of the litigant for whom we are here your approach will always be positive your approach will always be considerate your approach will be practical and your approach will be acceptable to the institution that approach will work so my request is now 14th of this month you have the examinations june, june sorry june so my good wishes to all the young members who are appearing in the examination go ahead do your best give your good services to the institution and only because of you people exist in the institution the very institution exists and uh, the kind of a job you people are doing i always thank to all of you and because your papers coming to me every day i put something to my law clerks and coming forward i said if somebody asked me to do it i can't do it 
because I don't have that much of patience to do. So my request is you are doing a great job to the institution. So go ahead accordingly, give your best services and uh, still you will not be able to fulfill the demand. And your demands which we are expecting from you will be much much more than what you are able to do. But still, we must work together, find out the better solution in the interest of not only the institution but in the interest of the litigant. These are my few words which I want to share with you. I am so thankful in giving me this opportunity to address you. Thank you very much. <laughs>